Hello, everyone. This is our second live. I'm super excited about it. I think I don't think I'm going to go back. I don't think I'm going to go back to recording. Actually, that's not true. Mother's Day week, we will be recorded. That is recorded. One of them's already been recorded, and we're going to be doing our second one um, in the coming week. So, um, all right. I think it's the week of Mother's Day we're going to do that but we're leaving and the reason why is uh, the only reason I'm doing recordings for Mother's Day's week Mother's Mother's Day week is because of the Radiance Conference so if you haven't booked your ticket or gotten your reg or gotten registered or whatever I don't I don't know if you have to register does that thing say you have to be registered I'm trying to look on the screen nope doesn't say you have to be registered come one come all we have, I think we have a pretty sizable, Heather knows, I don't know. Heather's not here. Everybody's left me. I feel like Jesus right now, just before he was crucified in the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane? Yeah, I can never say that word. <laughs> um, everybody's left me. Uh, Talia's not here today. I don't know where she's at. She's about to go away to Georgia. Uh, Tracy and Norma are in Nashville. They're doing a project for another church in Nashville, um, right outside of Nashville, uh, for um, a church that's doing the homeless. Uh, uh, has a huge homeless ministry um, that they have kind of, this church is the main church that is running it, and um, they have 52 other churches involved in this homeless ministry, which is crazy. But they're about to embark on a huge project, which we'll probably talk about here. So if people uh, have a heart for the homeless, um, Nashville right now is, it's rough. They have a huge, they've become very liberal, but they're, um, the homeless population is the elderly. It's not just the, the drug addicts. It's families. The, this church... And these churches are helping families that have small children. Uh, the way the political climate is, is that's the, that's the way everything's going to go. They're going to try and make sure nobody can own anything. It's too expensive. Uh, the elderly have no place to live because they're on a fixed income. So this church is, uh, along with these other 52 churches, but they're heading it up, they're doing a huge campaign to get this land um, it's a very large parcel of land, and then they're going to build on this large uh, uh, land a facility to house these people so they can uh, get to whatever they're earning on their day-to-day -day jobs. They can actually use that income, uh, save it up, and then get on their home again or get something they can rent, right? So, And Nashville's like Florida. It's becoming so expensive. Like everybody that's moving out of Nashville and moving further south or outside of the, because the, this area is outside of Nashville. It's about 45 minutes out. They're, it's so expensive to live in Nashville. It's like D.C. When I lived in D.C., we, I lived about 45 minutes outside of D.C., but when I would go to work there, it would take me an hour and a half, two hours to get to work sometimes, even though it actually could take me 20 minutes depending on I didn't necessarily live 45 minutes away no thank you yeah it's terrible <laughs> it's terrible so they live if you don't have to drive in traffic they actually this area is about 45 minutes but they've been they're like everything is exploded uh cost of living is crazy and so I have what I'm trying to tell you guys is that's where Tracy and Norma are they're actually going to help this church use their media skills uh, to help promote what's going on there. I have Aaron. Hello, Aaron's everybody. it. Hey, Aaron, <laughs> I have I have Aaron Mike. You know what? Aaron has figured something out for me. So that now you guys can actually, he's, he's the brains behind the operation in most cases. He just saluted me. Um, he, he set it up so now you guys can, even though you won't be able to see Tracy and them for, for the time being. That's coming soon. That's coming soon. Yeah. You can hear him, which is, hey, He's going to help me out with the podcast today, yep. whether you like it or not. <laughs> so put that Radiance thing back up for me, dear, if you don't mind. So Radiance. Um, so Pastor Dallas and Magalis, Revival Today, are going to have their Radiance Conference at the beginning. It's the week of Mother's Day. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the, uh, what do you call that thing? Graphic, right? I'm looking at the graphic right now. I think they told me I'm going to be speaking, and I think I speak on Friday, May 12th at the 10.30 session. So I'm super excited about that. And then I'm an idiot. 
I am such a freaking blonde. There is registration. There is registration. Yeah, I just oh. went to their website. So revivaltoday.com slash radiance. And there's a button there to click to register for more information. Awesome. Okay, so make sure you, if, ladies, whether you live in the area or outside of the area, register. I think their registration probably says whether you're going to be watching virtual or whether you're going to be in person. That's what a lot of people do. Now, so you can, uh, because then I think what it does is it sends you reminders. Which, listen, if you're me, you need reminders. Except for I like to remind myself. I don't like people reminding correct, me. Correct, correct. I, if you're on staff here, you know. It's a pride issue. I know don't, it is. Don't remind Hope. Part, huh? <laughs> don't remind Hope. Don't remind me. Listen, <laughs> I like to remind myself. I like to keep myself organized. I don't need somebody organizing me. Now, Tom and Tracy and, and Aaron, they love it. So the Radiance Conference, um, the Q&A. I thought I was actually facilitating the Q&A. I am not. I, t I was, m no, I'm not. Mm. I texted Magalis and I said, do I need to create questions for this? Or, um, or are, are you going to give them to me? And um, there you go. The Thank you, dear. Yep. That's where you go. Um, so she was like, well, you can if you want to. She's so sweet, though. You can if you want to. And I'm like, okay, well, who's on the panel? Just because they they're going to have it where the audience asks the questions. Oh. Yeah. A little different than how that's, I do it. That's cool. But, <clears throat> I'm a control freak. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask the questions. Me too. I, like, yeah. I want to know what questions are coming. <laughs> <clears throat> well, apparently I'm on the panel. I asked her. I was like, well, who's on the panel so I can create the questions? She's like, well, it's just going to be us three. I'm like, I am such an idiot. <laughs> I thought I was facilitating. So I'll be asked questions. That'll be interesting. Because um, I don't know. I think I'm a little bit more in your face than both of them. They're nicer than me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got the Radiance Conference. And then, listen, I need questions. I mean, I have a good stack. But I need questions, so send those things in. That's how we keep the podcast going, or I'm going to make up my own. It's going to happen one way or the other. This, this podcast never ends. I'll make up my own, or I'll be happy to answer yours. So send in your questions to askhope at hopehotline.com. I have to write that down because otherwise I do not know it. And I wasn't counting on Aaron because I don't think Aaron knows it either. Do you know it, Aaron? No, no, he did not know it. So it's askhope at hopehotline.com. Then the next thing, I'm going to solve this problem, okay? Here's the deal. Can you put that Logos thingy up again? Did you do a Logos? Nope, forget it. Don't worry about it. He'll, he'll find it. So here's the thing. We're going to go back to the anal and sodomy question. I'm going to resolve an issue because Aaron made sure we understood. I'm not going to go into too greater detail, but, you know, when Tom was on the podcast, Tom said that he thought, because it said homosexuals and, sod uh, and sodomites would not inherit the kingdom of heaven. It's two separate things. Aaron dug deep. And I'm not going to tell you why he dug deep, but I'm just going to tell you. He pure went into curiosity. Logos. Pure, pure curiosity. Pure curiosity, he said. <laughs> pure curiosity. But here's the thing. If you go to Logos, I'm telling you guys, everybody needs to get this app. It's, it's phenomenal. But if you look up, um, I'm only correcting this so that if anybody's abstaining in any way from what they really love, it ain't me. I can promise you that. But I'm just saying, if anybody's been abstaining, which I found out there were some people because Tom said sodomy was, you won't inherit the kingdom of heaven, so they did it. That's not been on the plate for them, okay? Well, it ends up in Logos. Logos is great because it breaks down uh, Greek, Hebrew, things like that. And that word specifically in scripture stood for homosexual relationships. Correct? Am I correct yeah, on that? Yeah, so you have... Yeah, explain this. Even though you can't see him, <clears throat> he's going to explain it. Yeah, you have two different uh, things. So the sodomite is the person committing the homosexual act. Yes. And the homosexual is the one receiving so Thank it's you. a dominant and a non-dominant homosexual partner. Yes. And now what I did find out too is, and I thought lesbians were out of the picture, but apparently lesbians, that's not the case. <laughs> I mean, I did not know that. Yeah. 
I mean, oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that prude. I'm really not that prude. But apparently, I'm more naive than I even thought. Yeah. I had no <laughs> idea. And I kid you not. I did not know that that could also apply. I was like, well, the lesbians are out of that. I mean, they, are, they got the homosexual thing going. Yeah. But the sodomite thing, not a problem. And they all, people in the room were like, uh, it's still possible. Yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> so we're done with the sodomy anal thing. I've cleared it up. If you like it, get back to it. You're fine. Tom was wrong on that he needed to just study out the greek and the hebrew and then he would have been dead on right <laughs> okay so this next question is about me and i'm going to go really fast on it because i have no answer to it really to be honest with you it says share your skincare routine morning and night what products do you use do you take vitamins or supplements i just want to look as good as you at 35. okay well listen I, I listen, I, I don't really use any skincare to speak of. I will tell you the, the thing that I do the most. I do put like oil of Olay on in the morning because um, I have really dry skin. If I had oily skin, I would look really young. They say, my dad though, he had very little wrinkles. He was a little leprechaun, like I said, but he had very little wrinkles. He had auburn hair, lots of freckles like me. Um, but I think it's my genes. And also, I will tell you, because people do tell me I look very young for my age. But not my forehead. My forehead's very wrinkly. And I've been working on my neck. Outside of that, I do nothing. And the supplements that I take, I do take a supplement called Thrive. I'm going to give a shout out to my girl, Sarah, because I buy it from Sarah. If you go to the church and you want some good supplements, talk to Sarah. Sarah's the girl. I mean, Thrive is... I love Thrive. I love Thrive One because, um, I mean, some people lose weight on it. That, that hasn't worked for me. But I don't think I use the one for that. But um, what I do love about it is, and I think Tracy says this too, both of us have more energy with Thrive. You get your supplement through a patch. You take a, a vitamin, two vitamin pills a day, and then you drink a supplement shake, which I hate. It's not that it tastes bad. It just, I don't, I don't, I don't know. So, uh, if you are looking for a good supplement, check out Thrive. Um, and then, and it's all like a, it's not organic, but it's like, it's like more healthy. Because you know some of those, like you go to the grocery store and you buy them like at Walmart or whatever. Those aren't real good ones. Oh, there you go. God bless. Are they like naturally derived? Is that... What does that, when you say naturally derived, what does that from mean? From natural like, products? Like plant-based? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about plant-based? Yeah. It is, some of it is plant-based. Okay. I don't know, all of it might be plant-based. If I had Sarah, she'd be able to tell she'd us right it, now. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And let me tell you, Sarah, she's, she's something else. <laughs> big personality. Oh, yeah. Someday she'll be on this show. She's big personality. Mm. But I don't know if the world's ready for Sarah just yet. So we're going to hold off on that one. If, she, if she's watching, because she's a faithful watcher, she's probably saying, I'll behave. I'll be good. <laughs> I don't trust you. <laughs> Big personality. Uh, also, my March, I have no March. They wanted to know, P.S., when are you going to sell your March? I got no March. Not yet. Not yet. I have my cups. And as I've told you, this is 25 bucks. Who wants to pay 25 bucks for this cup? I don't think it's worth it. You'd Aaron's, be surprised. Aaron's, Aaron's giving me this. You'd be surprised. I don't know. I don't know. My mom has one now. <laughs> Other than that, I don't know. I mean, we'll put them out there in the... You know what? That's what we'll do. I'll have Heather put some of my Hope Hotline cups out in the merch area for the church, and we'll see how they go. Yeah. And then we'll go from there. But 25 bucks for a cup? Because we aren't going to charge more than what they're worth. No. But that's what we pay for them. Yeah. That's a lot that, of money. That is expensive for a mug. For a mug. Yeah. And yeah. like, but it's if just you a regular mug. Them, it's not made of gold. If you bulk order them, though, it might no, be much cheaper. No, even if you bulk order really? them. Really? No. Mm -mm. She, I think she's, we bought like 15. Oh, wow. Okay. I know. They were all 25 bucks a piece. Crazy. I know it's crazy. So unless you really love the Hope Hotline, don't buy one. <laughs> uh, but only people who love me. The people who absolutely love me would buy one. 
outside of that, there's no reason. And that's out of sheer loyalty. Um, And then we made those Hope Hotline t-shirts. And seriously, like we had to be far away. One of the reasons why when me, Tracy, and Heather wore those Hope Hotline t-shirts when we were dancing, they're obscene. They were so dang tight. A medium's not a medium. (laughs) That was a small. It was like I'm finding that out to be true as well for me. You're finding that out to be true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought these in girls. We're usually unisex, so we got them in girls. Yeah. We had no idea how tight they would be. I thought I was a medium. I'm not a medium. I'm a large, unfortunately. Well, Heather got large. It's a rude awakening. Heather got large. Yeah. Even like it was obscene. <laughs> Nobody needed to be seen. We did not need to be seen up close. It was not weight wise is one thing. Otherwise, like there are other parts of us that none of us are small in, and we <laughs> definitely did not need to be seen up close in those. I was it's, like, oh. it's like that uh, that episode of King of Queens when Doug finds out he's got the big and tall clothes. Yes, yeah. I love that one. And he asks when when the changeover happened, and it was like oh, years yes. before. Oh <laughs> yes, I love that one. Oh my gosh! And she says to him, "You mean when that kid said Fatty McButter Pants? That wasn't enough for you <laughs> yeah, to know?" Yeah. And I call everybody Fatty McButter Pants. I love it. I love yep. it. So, I know. I love that one. (laughs) Um, So, we're going to go into the first question. Well, we already did the first question. We're going to go into the second question. You're going to get ready that first Corinthians. Okay. Um, The first one says, I have a question about the gift of prophecy. How do you know you have it? Also, is there a right way to give a prophetic word? So, um, we're going to go. I'm going to read scripture to you because there's two different prophecies. Okay. Okay. Um, let me make sure. I should have given you this, my phone, because I see it lighting up, Aaron. Actually, Aaron, can I do this? Can I pass this to you really quick in case Tom reaches out to me? Okay. Thank you, dear. All right. So 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11 is, is clear about prophecy. One form of proce- prophecy. Just like there's tongues for the body, there's prophecy for the body. Then there's tongues, personal tongues, and then there's uh, prof- uh, tongues for the body. So let's look at this. It says, there are diversity of gifts, but the same spirit. Here are differences of ministry, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works in all. Um, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge, through the same spirit and to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healings by the same spirit to another the working of miracles another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another different kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills now you can actually you can actually pray that you get all these gifts but he, the Holy Spirit is going to give these gifts to he, who, whomever he wills. I will tell you, for me, I've been given for the body the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues. Um, I also have my own, uh, you know, he, the Holy Spirit, not for the body, but he's given me, uh, everybody has the, the ability to be prophetic and everybody has the ability and it and god wills that all of us speak in tongues and prophesy but not necessarily the gift for the body okay so um when you speak a prophetic word for the body it has a certain look that it has to have tongues and interpretation if there's an interpretation it has a look so that you know whether it is right or it's wrong people will prophesy for the body and they will um, give tongues and interpretation and the word is very clear on what that should look like if you are to do it and if you don't do it right there should be a rebuke and let's look at that first corinthians fourteen three says on the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. So if you have a word for the body, 
uh, tongues, interpretation, prophecy, then, because uh, when you're speaking in tongues, a tongue is, you, an interpretation is like a prophetic word. If you do not do it correctly, the pastor should shut you down. There, you, when you prophesy during a service and you rebuke the congregation, that's not what it says that in 1 Corinthians 14, 3 says it should look like. It should be an upbuilding. It should be encouraging and console, okay? It, it, it should not look like a, a rebuke, okay? If I've been in services where a, perf- a person prophesied, they missed it. That's all there is to it. They missed it. And uh, the pastor did nothing about it. He let it go. And that's dangerous. Yeah. Because it adds confusion. See, and that's the reason why you don't see it in the church today. Aaron just said yes, because Aaron and I both grew up in, I grew up in basically in the, the Pentecostal world. That's all I've ever known. Yeah. You, do, you too. Yeah. Like, yeah. we've seen some weird crap. Oh, yeah. And we've seen some good crap. Yeah. Mostly good, but then you got the weirdies. And what happened is, is because pastors did not rebuke wrong prophecy. You can open that. Don't worry about it. Um, pastors did not rebuke wrong prophecy. Um, it hurts the body. And so you doubt the spirit, yep. right? And so uh, no, then nobody wants to have anything to do with it. And pastors don't want to rebuke because they'll lose members. So they just don't, it just goes away. We, we, we put the Holy Spirit in a box and we say you can only stay in these confines because if you step out of those confines, then that makes me have to do something that I'm not comfortable with, which is rebuke somebody when they're wrong. Right. So uh, that, that I think that's also one of the reasons why we've gotten back in my day, and you can tell me whether it, it was you remember it, but when I was a little, because I'm a lot older than you, mm-hmm. like I'm 55, I think I'll be 56. Or am I 50? Is Tom 54? And He's 54. He's 54. So I'm 55. I'll be 56. I'm terrible with numbers. <laughs> so, uh, well, I'm a lot older than you. To a certain extent, it is going to be different. But if you have ever listened to Kenneth Hagin or like a Charles Caps or even like a Smith Wigglesworth. See, I grew up in that, in that realm of teaching where like when you went to church, like they called you out. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it wasn't, and they called you out. Like people, like when Pastor Rodney calls people out um, for whatever they do, like there was people talking in the church one time and he called them up and then he told them basically get out. Okay. Nobody back in my day, all the time. Now pastors let children run up and, run up and down the aisle. And if you don't allow that, people get offended. We've literally had people be mad because we don't allow children to run up and down the aisle. Or we don't allow children to disrupt the service. How dare we? That's Holy Spirit time. Right. He's working on people. Back in the day, you knew better. You didn't do that nonsense. Yeah. yeah. Pastors were real strong shepherds. Yeah. Like you didn't mess with them. They were they were in charge. They had a responsibility. They understood that responsibility to the congregation. The staff is for uh, rescue, but it's also for correction. Mm-hmm. It's to save. And it's also to chastise. like chastise, yeah. right? And which like, means beat, by the way. Exactly. <laughs> and people can't handle it. Yeah. You know why I believe people can't handle it anymore? Mm. It's because parents don't parent anymore. Yeah. I, 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 I say this, and I've said this to Tom many times. The reason people don't like correction in the church is because they've never grown up with it. Yeah. They grew up in a daycare where nothing happened to them. You, you could do whatever you want because. Uh, you couldn't put your hands on a kid, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and then parents feel guilty because they've worked all day. They've had you in a daycare. So when they get home, there's guilt and they give you pretty much whatever you want. Discipline is a non-existent in most homes today. Yeah. So when you come to church and somebody actually loves you enough to discipline you, you're offended. You can't handle it. Mm-hmm. So you leave because you've never grown up with it. Never. Well, it's like the understanding of the fear of the Lord kind of starts with the fear of your parents. Absolutely. It and always does. if you does. don't have the fear of your parents, you don't have the fear of the Lord. No way. Yeah. Because you don't understand it. A good dad, it's like Tom says all the time, because the word fear in the Bible is anywhere from a loving to a the reverent, which is like scared. Terrifying to reverent. Scared yeah. to death. Yeah. That's what a good dad does. Yeah. Like my dad, he may have been only like five, six, but... 
you didn't mess with that man. You did not cross him. I don't care how tall. He had short man's disease. Like, <laughs> like I have short girl's disease. <laughs> Napoleon you, complex. <laughs> yeah, you don't. You didn't cross him. Yeah, like, yeah. if you crossed him, you did not know what was coming for you. <laughs> and you just didn't. I don't care how big or small of a person you are. You did not mess with that man. So um, that's what, but so back in my day, I don't know if it's the same for you, but pastors, like they saw miracle signs and wonders. Mm. They had prophetic words. They had tongues. Uh, they had interpretation. If they weren't doing it, someone in the congregation that was a strong believer was doing it. And if somebody was wrong, they shut it down. We don't do that anymore. So we don't see the miracle signs and wonders. We steer away from it for the fear of what it'll cost us. Yeah, and it's, I mean, people don't read First Thessalonians five nineteen through 22, which says to not quench the spirit. Yeah. Do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form 100%. of evil. 100%. Like. That's 100% true. <laughs> and that's what we do in, this, in, the, in the churches today. Yeah. Because there aren't strong leaders. And when you do have a strong leader, and this doesn't happen very often with Tom at all. Hardly at all. But when you do have a strong leader, a lot of times uh, people get offended and mad and they think that he's cocky, he's uh, condescending, he's arrogant, and that's nothing. It's none of those things. It's being in charge of the body of Christ that God has given you because absolutely you're the only one. That, he's going to be the one that answers for how he ran this church. He is the shepherd, yeah. He's the shepherd. And people are always, not always, because that's not true. The few, it's it's just very, very funny to me. And a lot of times it's not the men, it's the women. Yeah. Because women like to run their homes nowadays. And they like a wimpy man. If you're a strong man, most of the time, the women that leave this church, you can always tell. If they run their house, <laughs> they ain't going to make it. Because they feel like they want a pastor who is a wuss, mm-hmm. a wimp. You ain't got one here at Foundation Church. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. What is a prophet? In the Greek for the New Testament, the word is prophetua, which means to prophesy, to be a prophet, speak forth by divine inspiration to predict. And when it says all those things, I have a bug flying around me. When it's talking about those things, when you're prophesying, it's not a prophecy or fortune telling like you go to a fortune teller and they read your palm or whatever the prophecy is going to be kingdom related it's it, it's a declaration of things to come but it's through the inspiration of the holy spirit so it always will be kingdom related it's not going to be um something like if you go to a fortune teller and he tells you oh you'll be married and within such and such a time or don't go on that trip because Whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It won't be like that. The Holy Spirit, if you're not supposed to go on a trip, he'll talk to you about that. He ain't going to talk to somebody else about that. <laughs> Although I will say that's not necessarily true. Because remember, who's that guy that you that Tom loves, that singer that Tom loves that I don't like? Elvis. Uh, he's the folk. <laughs> no, kidding. not Elvis. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, uh, Tommy and Tom love that uh, guy. He was in the 70s, oh, did monumental work for... I mean, he was so good. He died in the plane Rick crash. Green or Keith Green. Keith Green. Keith Green. Keith Green. Keith Green's wife, before he got on that flight, she told him, "Don't go on that flight. I do not feel good about this." And Keith Green was a very, from what I have been understood or has been said about him, he's he's not a, a pushover. Mm-hmm. He kind of like was like it was his way or the highway, and um, and he didn't listen to her, and the plane went down with him and his son. But she said, "Don't go." And he didn't listen. So do I say that God can't, I mean, I say that, you know, God, most people I know when they've been told don't go, on, or most people that I know that felt like they shouldn't go somewhere, it wasn't somebody telling them. It was the Holy Spirit sharing that with them. Like Andrew Womack knew he wasn't supposed to get on this flight, canceled it. The people that he was going to go see were furious. They were not happy about it, that he canceled on them, and the plane went down. Well, and maybe, maybe the Holy Spirit did tell Keith not to get on there and he just didn't listen because he's like no no that's fine that's not the Holy Spirit I'm going learn to listen to the Holy Spirit learn to listen I'm telling you one time you guys will know you'll know it because you know this person I'm talking about we had a worship leader uh, Matt Mm -hmm. Um, this is when I was learning to I was like Lord I want to be able to hear your voice even in the littlest things like I want to hear you 
like in the craziest things I want to be able to hear your voice and we should always be like trying to grow and, and hearing his voice so I was like I had been praying that well uh, this worship leader of ours his car broke down and the Holy Spirit told me it was his spark plugs and I thought that's crazy <laughs> I don't even think that car has spark plugs <laughs> that's crazy and I was I was like I should have told him it was the spark plugs because it was going to save him money. I didn't. He took it to the shop and they told him it was your spark plugs. Wow. And that's where you listen to the Holy Spirit. You, I'm like, I'm crazy. Like that's, their cars don't have spark plugs anymore, do they? Yeah. They do have spark plugs. Every, every car. <laughs> See, and I don't know anything about cars. Yeah. So I literally thought I was nuts, but yeah. I knew the Holy Spirit. I was yeah. like, Holy Spirit, I think you're telling me it's the spark plugs. It was. Ask him in the little, which I learned a valuable lesson from yeah. that. Because when I even doubt what I think and it's crazy, I still do it. Yeah. I still do it. Because I'm like, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But if I'm right, then I've been obedient. Yeah. You know, even exactly. if you're wrong, you've been obedient. Because God will honor you because you've taken the step. First Corinthians 14, 31 says, For you can all prophesy one by one that all may learn and may be encouraged. Goes back to what I was just saying. Some people, I mean, hearing that somebody's spark plugs or something's wrong with, uh, that's crazy. But listen, even in those little things, I've even heard, I said to the Lord, I want to know names of people because I want to prophesy and be able to call people out and by their name because it val validates who the Holy Spirit is. If you can name a person, say whatever the name is, let's say Joe, the yep. Holy Spirit has this for you. So you name Joe and you call him out. Okay, when you speak to Joe because you got his name right, he's going to listen to what the Holy Spirit has to tell him. Because now he knows, okay, there's no way you could have known that. So literally, that's happened to me. Um, I was asking the Lord, Lord, I want to know people's names. I remember a little girl bringing her dad into children's church. I, it's when I, would run, when I ran the children's program. The room is packed full of kids. And this man comes in, it's their first time, and he wants to see what we're learning. And his name was the weirdest name. It was like a name you wouldn't even think of. The Holy Spirit said that guy, that, that's that man's name. This, his name is this. And I almost said it to him. But when you're learning, you doubt. Yep. And I kick myself because I said to him, said to the little girl, I said, introduce us to your dad, to your dad. And when he said that name, I was like, oh my gosh. So it just goes to show you, you do hear him. Yeah. But it was a great learning lesson for me. Um, it, when, I've, when I haven't done those things, it makes me stronger to say, okay, I heard you. I know you were right. Next time I'm going to do it. And I do. Like yeah. those things were years ago. And now I go, even if I think this is the craziest thing, I, I, I'm probably wrong about this. I still go and I say it. And usually the response of the person, if the response of the person is tears, you know you got it right Nailed normally. It. Normally, I've had literally people look at me like I'm missing it completely and then come to me later and go, I don't know how you knew that, but that, and you've had that. Yeah. Yeah. And Heather's had it. Heather's now back in the room. She's come back from the garden. Uh, from, <laughs> she's come back to the garden of Gethsemane. I said everybody <laughs> left me like they did Jesus okay. at the garden. So um, everyone should prophesy. Everyone should speak in tongues. And are you going to be nervous about it? Yeah, you might be. But the thing is, is there's strength in that. There's a boldness in that. And listen, if you want to be used by God, you got to walk. It's like what Paul said. I don't come with wise and persuasive words, but a demonstration of the Spirit's power. You want people to, their lives to change and be something, and you want, you want to be used by God, then drop the nervousness, drop being afraid of what others will think of you, um, and walk in the demonstration of the Spirit's power. Will you be uncomfortable sometimes? Yes, but the more you do it, the less uncomfortable you are. Yep. And the stronger and more bold you are because you know that Christ is using you. You are blessed more times than the person you've blessed yeah. by the, the word you say. It's, um, it's amazing. Will you miss it? Yeah, you'll miss it, but make sure beyond a shadow of a doubt. I, I heard Rodney Howard Brown say this one time, which is the same thing that I grew up with, um, you know, good pastors teach that if you're going to walk things out and you're going to speak a prophetic word over someone 
you better make sure that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that when you say the Lord told me to tell you this, it's his words. It's exactly what he said. It's not something that I hate um, giving a prophetic word to somebody that I know their business. I would prefer never to give, oh, I, I would prefer never to give a word to somebody I know their business. I love it when I give a word to somebody I don't know anything about them because then I know that it's real. If you know somebody's business and you go and try and give a prophecy to them, sometimes your own personal thoughts of things get in the way, correct? Yeah, 100%, 100%. Correct? Both of them are saying correct. It's way better. And I'm just telling you, if you're about to say, thus saith the Lord, <laughs> you better make sure that he said it. And that's what Rodney Howard Brown says. Pastor Rodney, he's like, I never, ever, speak for God unless I know 100% he said it because I'm not going to be held accountable for that. Yeah. It's a serious business. Oh, yeah. It's serious business. But everybody should do it. Everybody should be seeking him first. Everybody should be getting their walks with God on a daily, better, daily basis better than they were the day before. You should be growing every single day in your walk and you should be, be functioning at a higher level uh, for the kingdom every single day than you were the day before. If you're not then you need to check yourself and you need to get about his business because that's what we're supposed to do. The rest of what goes on in the world is nonsense. We're in this world, we're not of it. We need to be operating at a higher level so that we can win the loss because ultimately that's the goal. Winning the loss, discipling believers, is the foremost important thing that God has placed us on this earth for. We are to save people from the fire. And the ways you can do that is through tongues and through prophecy um let's see now a lot of times when you give a prophetic word it'll be encouraging personal personal i'm not talking about for the body for the body it's always encouraging okay but there will be times of rebuke that you will have to give it and i have had to do that i thought i was completely wrong one time i had to give a rebuke to someone and I was very gentle and very cautious how I wrote it. And I was like very specific because I don't know if that's, this might've been the first time I've ever, I ever re gave a rebuke for the Lord. And I thought for sure, I'm like, how can this be right? How can, but I'm going to do it, Lord, because you told me to do it. How can this be right? This cannot be right. And it's because I knew this person and I, it was secret sin. And I had no idea about it. And I thought for sure, this is wrong. But the Holy Spirit would not release. And when I gave it to the person, I was like, I literally was like, here. And I hightailed it out. And they're like, oh my gosh. It wasn't until later they contacted me and they go, the only way you could have known that was the Lord. The only way. And that's and through repentance. Yeah, and that's like what you were talking about of growing up in church and like actually kind of being afraid is, I remember that. Or you're like, this guy knows my sin. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Because they did. I mean, they were like walking in it. And oh, yeah. Like terrified oh, yeah. that the pastor was going to actually call you out or something. And they did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they did. And like when I was a kid, there was no children's church. You sat in church. Yeah, same. Yeah. And guess what? You sat there. I didn't get a coloring book. <laughs> no. I didn't get things to play with. No. Guess what I did as a small child? Not even in kindergarten. Guess what I did? I sat my butt down and I sat quietly. And if we didn't sit quietly, we got taken out by our parents, not because someone came and asked us to please remove ourselves, no. okay? Because my parents were smart enough to know and conscientious about the others around them to know <laughs> that the Holy Spirit was doing a work in yeah. others around them. So guess what they did? They got us up, took us out, whooped our tail, yep. and then brought us back in. And then they told us if we wanted to cry, they'll give us another licking oh, yeah. to cry about something. Yeah. You know, you want to cry? We'll give you something to cry about. Okay, the reason we got taken out is because we were not being obedient. It is not hard for a child to sit in a service for two hours quietly. And if it is, there's something wrong. And I'm not talking about ADD or ADHD. I'm talking about parenting. Yeah. There's something wrong with people's parenting enough said about that because that'll probably tick off some people but <laughs> it's the truth i mean uh, it's the truth um let me just tell you this personally i know this happens i've seen it happen it's not right 
If God gives you a word for somebody, I don't care if it's encouragement or a rebuke, you do not share that word that you have with someone unless it's like your spouse or something like that. And even like when I had that rebuke, I didn't share that with anybody. That was between God and that person. Nobody else is involved. I will tell you this, when you share encouragement's kind of different i will tell you because sometimes you're excited for this person and depending on what it is it, it, it's not that it's not but a rebuke definitely you never share and if you do share it you've devalued everything that's written on that piece of paper because now it's a form of gossip mm -hmm. it's divisive the heart behind which is what is written on that piece of paper has no value anymore because i say if you share that there was a there's an ulterior motive behind what was written on that yeah yeah if, if it's a true word of god for somebody you don't want to share it you you don't because you know how serious that is yeah i'd be Although, scared what is that <laughs> i would be scared i would be scared to death to yeah, share yeah. somebody else's rebuke yeah but i have seen it where people write a rebuke down for somebody and then go hey i want to show you what god gave me for this person no way no way it the the heart behind it already tells you it's bad yeah because it's sin you're gossiping so there's sin you don't you're a gossip when you do that so that means that you the heart behind it it's fruit from the poisonous tree it's all bad so nobody should receive your word for anything it's tossed out in the trash because it's about the value of it so if you have a rebuke for somebody then don't share it it's not to be shared um, and if you receive a rebuke from someone make sure or even i would say a word of encouragement or a prophecy uh, people people have given us prophetic words and people have uh we don't really receive rebukes i will be honest with you i mean every now not even every now and then i think i think we maybe have gotten two in our whole ministry mm -hmm. uh, a, a prophetic and one of them i tossed out because they shared it with somebody mm. And I'm like, it, nothing, that ain't worth it. I mean, that I already know it's sin. It's if the foundation of this rebuke is sin. Yeah. So I'm not, I don't receive what they have to say. Um, so, uh, and plus that when I did read it, it had so much that wasn't accurate in it that I was like, this person's very offended and angry. It's feelings. Yeah. It's feels. All, the, all that was involved is their feels. I ain't got time for that. But encouragement or rebuke, I will tell you, do not just receive it. You have to be very careful what, when somebody speaks something over you. First Thess Thessalonians 5, 20 through 21 says, do not despise prophecy, test all things, hold fast to what is good. So uh, be very careful what you receive from anybody, even if it's good, because their intentions could be good, but they could still be wrong, especially if they know you because they love you. They want something good for you. Uh, and... And, and their heart behind it is good, but they can still be wrong. You can still miss it. So always, always test it and make sure it's accurate. And the other thing I will say to you is if you go to a place, like we've had people go to like the river, even Revival Today, even if you come to our church and you visit our church and you try and speak over people, we're not going to allow it. We have people who are allowed to lay hands on people and pray for people. They've gone through what is what I call a vetting process. So um, they are in complete alignment with this church. We've gone to the river and people have wanted our people. So when I say this, I'm not talking about another church, but our people have wanted to lay hands up front on people from our church, but people. And the river was like, you ain't laying hands on them. Because at that time, the people that are at the altar are their responsibility. They don't know who's laying hands on them. That's serious business. So they were told, get your hand off that person. You don't pray for anybody. They got mad. They got offended. I don't even know if they ever went back to the river. But to me, that's childish behavior. And second of all, uh, they're right. People don't understand the responsibility that leadership holds um, when, when you are... Uh, I, well, I don't know that they were shepherding those people because they weren't the pastor of, you know, they weren't Pastor Rodney, but people don't understand the responsibility that a, people in leadership of a church have and the, the responsibility 
um, to the, the sheep of the flock. And so instead of getting offended, people should say, thank God we have people who care enough about people that they don't just let everybody run amok and do whatever the heck they want. They have a process, they have a procedure, and they allow the Holy Spirit to move, but through a process and a procedure, and that's reverence. Um, not everybody should be laying hands on people. Listen, I'm just telling you, there's some crazy, crazy Christians out there. Yeah. They get it wrong, and they have no business laying hands or prophetically speaking over well, anybody. And God is a God of order, so there's an order to things. Like uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 32 through 33, also says that the Spirit's of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So when people get all, like, they have to do yeah. it and they're compulsive, it's like, no, no, no. Mm -mm. It's subject to you. Oh, yeah. You can control it. Absolutely. This is That's one of the scriptures that I always say when people have said to me, I can't control it. I, You yeah. know, I start running and I go crazy. And I'm like, Outbursts. well, that can't yeah. be true because yeah. Corinthians clearly says <laughs> yeah. that you, the spirit is subjected to you. Yeah. You have control over everything. And he's not the author of confusion, but peace. So Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that to me is just so funny because yeah. I'm like, people don't know their word. Yep. And that's why I always want to, for people who are afraid, like the Holy Spirit's going to go in and just take over and make them do things that they don't want to do. Can't happen. No. He's, no. A, he's a gentleman, just like Jesus is a gentleman, just like God. Nobody's forcing anything on you. They knock. At all. They knock. They knock. You can exactly. open the door or not, but they're knocking. Yeah. But it's like uh, one of those things, and I say it's not a cop-out, but it's a thing of not understanding. If you knew the word and if you read the word, you'd understand there's nothing to be afraid of. Yep. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. And if you just give him a chance, instead of being afraid, you'll find out there's nothing to be afraid of. It's yep. the unknown, though. Yeah. Everybody's afraid of the unknown. So I hope that answered that question. That was quite lengthy. I've now spent 45 minutes on two questions. That's all right. Actually three, because I answered your anal sodomy question. That's true. And your skin care and all that. And my, yeah. Well, that was first. Oh, okay. Yeah, that didn't count. Oh, so okay. I have three questions so far. <laughs> okay. Even though the thir first one really wasn't a question, it was a correction. <laughs> but we're like the newspaper here. If we get it wrong, we fix it. And God forbid somebody does without something that they enjoy. <laughs> so... Aim to please here. We're going to go to the next question, which is a very odd question. And I know this quick person. I, I've, I said, send it in. I want to hear it. I mean, I want to hear their funny questions. It lightens the mood. Deodorant companies sell their product in varieties of 72-hour protection strength, which I had no idea that was true. I did not know this. I had to actually investigate this question about deodorant, antiperspirant. So should I put it on only once every three days, or should I still apply it every day, asking for a friend? <laughs> so one should assume you don't shower. <laughs> That's what I say. So do you agree, Heather? Yeah. yeah. One should assume you, you're not showering if you're questioning whether to apply every day. So that would be either you're from another country, because they believe yeah. in not showering. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. truthfully what they believe. Or what? It's a or it's a hurricane. <laughs> you have no power. Or you're just a stinky individual. You have no hygienics. But I know you, and you didn't smell the last time I saw you. So you shower. Or this person did not stink. Or it works. Or it works. But they look clean. Their hair wasn't greasy. Yeah, because if you apply it for three days, that means that you didn't shower for three days. Right. So Your hair wouldn't be nasty. Yeah. But th this person was very clean, neat and tidy. Very orderly. But I love the question. <laughs> you think out of the box. <laughs> so here's what I learned. Deodorant does not last 72 hours. <laughs> well, I could have told you that. Antiperspirant, <laughs> antiperspirant is supposed to. But here's the thing. Tom, this is a true story. He might not like that I'm sharing this. Uh, Tom. Oh, gosh. I looked at the name of that daggum box. You remember uh, Matt had this guy um, in his band, Aaron. His name was Billy. Do you remember Billy? Billy turned Tom on to this. It's, I think it's an antiperspirant. And you put it on several times. With the problem with antiperspirant in is it clogs the pores. That's why I don't wear it. It clogs the pores. So unless you want your pores clogged, now Tom's 
pores are clogged. He never sweats underneath here. That's why he sweats. He has boobage. Oh, yeah. He yeah. has sweat boobs. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep, that's why every area of Tom sweats other than his armpits because mm. of antiperspirant. So unless sweat's got to go somewhere, people, you're going to still sweat. Yeah. It is going to happen. So if you use antiperspirant, it clogs the pores, and eventually you'll get man boobs, <laughs> which has sweat boobs and you'll be like tom that's why tom's in a no no sh- he's never to be seen without a shirt club which is most people um so because i mean he's got a pretty good body for working out but i mean he's above average. he is above average i will say i will say that i but mean i i literally still. watched him just bench 285 yeah he's after not working out for like yeah, a he, while. He can bench a lot. Yeah, oh yeah. It was pretty so, impressive. Yeah. So so yeah, Aaron's oh my gosh. Aaron. Aaron's now working out with my son and and Tom at, in the middle of the night at three in the morning. Yeah, we did it last night. Oh, all this God. morning. <laughs> what time were you at were, what time were you guys working out in the gym? Probably three or four. Three and four. We have a gym in our house. Yeah. In our garage. Which is very hot. Yeah, yeah Tommy and, and Aaron. Well, he, I literally out my bed yeah. room is next to the garage. And I can hear my son, not Aaron. Tommy's so loud. <laughs> Thank God Aaron is in there going, shh. Yeah, I try to shush shh. him. Yeah. The only thing that's really loud that we can't really control is when you slam a weight down. And I'm like, ooh. I have my earplugs in. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's like, ooh, that. I was that telling Heather, up. I'm having to wear earplugs now because Tom's snoring, even <laughs> though he's snored all of our married life. His snoring is so much bothering me now. <laughs> I have earplugs next to the bed. It's bad, but hey, Travis snores, but she's always woken up from Travis. So all you men that snore or all you ladies that snore, God bless, man. I You're snore when I'm exhausted. Up. Huh? I snore when I'm exhausted. Like if I'm <sighs> like like Sundays after church when I go home, I'm probably snoring. Uh, it's it's miserable. If anybody out there that's watching has a spouse that snores, Normally it doesn't bother me, but I feel for you because recently I'm like I'm tired. I'm not getting the accurate sleep that I need. He's, I'm up all <laughs> night long. He is snoring so daggum loud, but he always has. Yeah, he's way less than his dad though. Your dad, my dad, and his dad you could hear on the opposite side of the house. <laughs> not pleasant. My brother is just as bad. So let me go on to that. Say this about the but about the deodorant. Um, so. If you're showering every day, stick with deodorant. Antiperspirant, not going to work unless you don't mind sweating somewhere else under your armpits. If you shower every day, that should solve the problem, but you may need to reapply. Me and Heather, we're always reapplying. Right, girl? Always. <laughs> oh, me too. Oh, Aaron does too. I do it at least twice a day. Yeah. With the gel. I don't use antiperspirant. Oh, I don't use antiperspirant, but we like use the powder like secret or whatever isn't that what we, is that what you use like some people use men's deodorant yes yeah, she changes them. but she you used to use the ones without the metals in it correct I still you still she uses ones without metals yeah. i yeah. don't care. no aluminum yeah no aluminum i don't care i just do the classic old man speed stick and that doesn't have any aluminum in it either so i'm like perfect i think is that is that uh no there's your one starts with a d right I don't know. Tom uses. So I don't know what Tom uses. It's green, but it's not speed stick. Mm. Maybe it's speed stick. Heather's just charcoal. If whatever you use, if it's not antiperspirant, unless you don't sweat a lot, you're going to be reapplying. <laughs> I just came in from outside before the podcast. The girl was reapplying. It's hot here in Florida. It's hot. It's not hot in other places. No. It's hotter than tar down that, here. Though. That's the one. <gasps> Oh, that is his. Yeah, yeah. That is his. Yeah. Okay, speed stick. I guess that's the one men like. I thought he used one that starts with a D, but it's speed stick. Okay, now i got five minutes to answer this question. <laughs> and this question, let me see. You're live. You can go as long as you want. may take a little bit of time, but I'm going to try and go as fast as I possibly can through it. I might going to have to have Aaron tell me the name of it again. But how do you feel about marijuana, sugars, pharmaceutical drugs? Cleansing our pineal, did I say that right? Pineal, yeah. Pineal gland helps connect with God. Don't believe it's true, 
do that research you have been opposed to do. Which I think this is hilarious. This person that it's like, pretty challenging. Jeez. Yeah. My thing is, is how do you even know what I'm opposed to and what I'm I accept? Yeah, go ahead. Eat eat some sugar hey, over there, Heather. I'm drinking. And like, I just I, I read that and I went. I don't really like. I kind of laughed, to be honest with you. I don't get it. I mean, most people would be offended by that. Like, what? Who the crap? Do you well, think you are? Well, they don't know you but at all because you research everything. So. I do research everything. <laughs> I do. I don't. It don't bother me a bit. But I was like, who says that? Right? Like, who says that? Do the research that you're you've been opposed to do. I love that you know what I'm willing to do and what I'm not willing to do. <laughs> Truth is strange to the educated mind of cognitive dissonance. Let him in. <laughs> oh, my word. So this person, I mean, maybe I should do to them what they did to me. Think that that I think that I know them as well as they know me. Like, that's, that's a very condescending. Oh, extremely. Condescending way to ask a question. And acting like you have and cognitive very, dissonance, too. Yeah, and very, like, pious. Oh, yeah. Very pious. I don't know. Or maybe somebody just wants to hang on to their weed. Well, so that's... <laughs> I don't know. I think somebody wants to hang on to the marijuana. Well, that's what I was going to ask, though, because it's talking about marijuana, sugars, and pharmaceutical drugs. You'd assume that they're against sugars and pharmaceutical drugs. So are they against marijuana, too? Or does that open No, no, no. Your... They want to hang on to it. All so three? Get this. Okay. All, well. They, they, well, no, they're using the... the the sugars and the the pharmaceutical drugs because they I think they believe that's what I like I'm uh, okay with ah uh, got there I believe that's the excuse that's, uh, yeah, yeah that's there it. too like you like sugar oh got you it. like you you're you're not opposed to pharmaceutical drugs I, but my thing is is probably wanna probably wanna you probably wanna hang on to your marijuana I don't care what you do <laughs> hang on to your marijuana it makes me no difference I'm not the one going to hell for it so I don't care. <laughs> We're Hang on to it. I hope it's worth minded. it. Huh? We're supposed to be sober-minded. I know. Like, you can't. <laughs> whatever. That's, I mean, cognitive dissonance, that's opposite of that. Yeah. It's totally, the definition of cognitive dissonance is mental stress or discomfort experienced by an individual who holds two or more contradictory beliefs, ideas, or values at the same time. I have no mental stress or discomfort. And you don't hold I have no views. double-mindedness. Yeah. I say pharmaceutical drugs, if you are addicted to them, yeah. then you're going to hell. Yeah. I mean, you're not using, that. you're not allowed to drive with those. Correct. So obviously they do something to your mind. You're sugars, clearly not sober-minded. I mean, sugars are not a drug. And sugars is not a high. I, I don't know what to tell you about that, but it's not the same as marijuana. My thing is, is this. I understand the pineal gland. But there's ways of, uh, there's ways to cleanse the pineal gland that don't require, you know, marijuana and all this other stuff. For Second Timothy one seven says we are to be of sound mind. And Isaiah twenty six three says a, a man will be in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee because he trusteth in him. The pineal gland is a a gland that's at the back of the brain, okay? You wanna put up that little, um, that first like graphic that I had? Yeah. So, is there a way that that bottom, see how that bottom. Let me to zoom in. Is there a way to do that? So you can look down at the bottom where that pineal gland is to show people what that is. So I got it right there. Cause I didn't, uh, in, all de in all fairness to this person and their question, I didn't know what the pineal gland is. And again, I don't well, mind I doing, I don't yeah. mind looking at it, okay? So what is that? It is important, but marijuana, you don't need to do marijuana. You don't need to do, you don't. The pineal gland sits above the hypo, whatever it signs the pituitary gland to release all our daytime hormones. Okay, you don't, it's, you, it, it, it operates the thyroid, the themis, the pancreas, the adrenal, the ovaries, 
like for me I mean it does it it does it has a big function okay but you don't need marijuana you don't need sugars and you don't need pharmaceutical drugs to cleanse or detox the pineal gland because the question is, is how do you feel about marijuana sugars pharmaceutical drugs cleansing cleansing our pineal gland helps connect with god don't believe it's true well let's look at how you can cleanse it there's a pineal pine, pineal am i Pine, saying it right still pineal pineal the eye is long yeah, yeah and the yeah. everything else is the pineal gland has a detox show them the detox dear There you go. Right there. Guess what? You certainly don't need marijuana to detox. Just a little wheatgrass. Different go, type of grass. <laughs> uh-huh. Go holistic. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you're so worried about the pineal gland being cleansed, let's look what marijuana does to you. Okay? It alters the mind, just like alcohol. It is addicting, just like alcohol. Don't believe me? Do your research. It's true. It does. It also, um, it also, uh, it has major effects to the brain. Everybody, I mean, back in the day when I was in high school, they would give you a, they would have this commercial that would take a frying pan and they put an egg in it and they'd say, this is your brain on drugs. And one of the things they oh, said yeah. was marijuana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever talked to somebody who smoked weed for a long period of time? Yep. Yeah, they don't function real well. They're usually pretty crazy. They are. And paranoid. And paranoid. <laughs> yeah. So if you're worried about your pineal gland, which is in your brain, you might not want to smoke marijuana. I don't know. Call me crazy. The side effects of marijuana is memory issues augmented levels of pain alterations to emotion blood pressure and movement control i did my research <laughs> oh the ones that you're opposed to <laughs> oh yeah the ones that i'm opposed to yeah uh, clearly not including long-term side effects which is brain health lung health cancer heart health addiction and possible addiction to other drugs drugs because i've known a lot of people who um back in the day that were started out on just doing marijuana and weed and they progressively went to other stuff because it just wasn't doing it to them well, anymore. yeah it's known as a gateway drug so it leads you to other things yeah 100 percent. now let's look at pharmaceutical drugs and depending on the drug of choice it has multiple side effects but they are also very addicting and can lead to illegal drug use, which can lead to jail. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're uh, if you're addicted like to oxycodone, oxycotton, you're going to jail. That's the facts. Um, black market stuff, which is part of that. Pharmaceutical drugs, you can buy a lot of pharmaceutical drugs on the black market. The reason it's on the black market is because you're not supposed to have it. And the reason you're not supposed to have it is because it's not good for you. And I mean, again, Take your chances for, for, I mean, it's not that I don't care about your soul and salvation. I do. But if you're dogmatic, take your chances. It's not worth it to me. Let's look at sugar. It's not good to be addicted to sugar. But it doesn't alter the mind. It doesn't. It's proven. It doesn't alter the mind. Like marijuana and uh, pharmaceutical drugs. Is it addicting? Yeah. Sugar is addicting, 100%. Yeah. But you ain't going to die and go to hell over being addicted to sugar unless you're a glutton. Yeah. That gluttony, is, it, gluttony is bad. That is true. But for the most part, there ain't going to be a lot of gluttons in hell. But you can be sober-minded and be addicted to caffeine or sugar. But 100%. you cannot be sober-minded and be addicted to heroin or oxy no. or meth. I mean, it's no. all the same. Or no. alcohol. No, I mean, and you're not, it's, you will not inherit the kingdom of yeah, heaven. Yeah, because you're a drunkard. You're a drunkard. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I've already given the definition of being a drunkard so many times on this podcast. I'm mm -hmm. not going to go into it because I'm <laughs> way past my, I'm now over four minutes. It, we're still rocking though. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I don't know. I don't know what to tell. How many people do we have on? Uh, over 30. 
we have over 30 people on right now so I don't want to lose all of you because I've gone over my hour <laughs> but I do want to tell you this because Tracy wanted me to tell you this and I did not write it down but and I will on Friday's podcast but oh my word the level of people like the live isn't really the live and you know this because yeah. you do this so even though you can't see Aaron like Aaron has been astounded at the number of people we have watching live this podcast for as short as we are. Yeah, hundred percent. Why is that? Why are you so shocked? Because most podcasts don't start no. out like this no. big, right? No, no. With this, you usually the thing is is that with like most podcasts, um, yours is probably in the top ten percent. You'd be surprised because everybody thinks of the biggest players like Joe Rogan or yeah. Glenn Beck or whatever. Okay, they didn't start that way. Right. And when they started, they didn't have this many people listening live. And that's not that's not even counting the people that are going back and listening to it. Right. Because, again, you have people all over the world listening to your podcast. We have a map of all the different countries. I know. It's so, crazy. Yeah, like that's, Egypt, not, that's not normal. I know. Yeah. It's crazy. It's I, cool. When I saw Egypt, I was like, no way. And then there's, like, different parts of the United States where it's, like, very much so listened to. Yeah. Yeah. And then... uh you have anywhere from people in like Berlin to yeah. some rural country town in America, and like that's pretty cool. It is pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. So although I have thirty people watching, which listen, I love it. Yeah. Thirty plus on 30, average. We have a because yeah. we have several platforms. But I will tell you, as I always say, I'm riding on the coattails of my husband. <laughs> Most people are not blessed. Like my husband paved the way to to where I because he if I didn't have him. To like he has a he's helped promote me and things like that I wouldn't probably be where I'm at so I didn't have to do the hard work he did yeah, he yeah, yeah. he grinded way more than I'm I've had to grind take it <laughs> I'm taking it I'm running with it I have no shame to my game whatsoever yeah at all most important thing today is out of everything is do you know Jesus to be your Lord and Savior is it, is it a decision that you have made before and you need to come back or it is something that you have never considered. And listening to this podcast, maybe just this once, but usually it's over a period of time. And, and it's usually not something like just the podcast. There are things that life, you know, Jesus is so good. The Holy Spirit is just trying to draw you in constantly. He is pulling at your heartstrings. I know for me, when I walked away and I was hardcore gone, and then something just started to change, like a little bit at a time that, and you can add to this, Aaron, because you did the same thing me, but you were gone for a short, shorter period of time. But then there was something that just started to give. I started like what I used to be so hard-hearted to, I was more sensitive to. Not mm -hmm. real, not a lot, but a little bit. So instead of just being like, nope, I'd be like, Okay, I'll listen to that for a few seconds or whatever and instead of being dogmatic, like yeah. turning the channel when a Christian song came on or whatever. And over a period of time of that, the Holy Spirit is just pulling at you. He's he's it's like a it's like a M&M. &M. It's got the hard shell with the soft center. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And he's just chipping away at that hard shell so he can get to the soft center so he can bring you back. Would you say that's somewhat accurate for you? Yeah, and I mean, it's like the seed that's planted. I mean, especially for us, because we grew up in a Christian home, the seed yeah. that was planted of train your child in the way they should, they should go, no and promise. when they grow old, they won't depart from it. Okay, well, that seed has been planted. So it's like I, when I walked away, I couldn't, it was, I was too guilty. I couldn't, I wasn't good at being a sinner. Yeah. Like oh, I, was, I was good at being a sinner. <laughs> I was very good at being Mentally, I was not, though. Even mentally, I was. I was so far I was gone. not. I couldn't, um, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I couldn't. Yeah, but here's the thing. You, you weren't as far gone as I was, I don't think. Because you were still, like, I didn't go to church. Well, I, I was still tithing, and I was still. Yeah, you were still tithing. Because I knew. I just, yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you weren't saved. But I was you being still an understood idiot. the principles. Correct. See, I was, I was gone. I was very, very far gone. Yeah. So it's totally different. Yeah. But still the same, because you still knew that the Holy Spirit was... Correct. ...poking and prodding you back. Yeah. And so when he, when you finally knew it, you were like me. Drew a line in the sand and said, okay, if I do this, I'm doing all back in 100%. 100%. There ain't yeah. no playing games. Yeah. It's all or nothing. 
And that's some of you guys right now. It's all or nothing. You've either you've never been saved or you've been saved. And that's the deal. It is all or nothing. When you say, Lord, I want you to be Lord of my life, that's exactly what it is. It's all or nothing. You cannot be hot and cold. It's not possible. It doesn't work. What will happen is, is the Lord will slowly, as you come back, as you either come back to him or you come to know him in a deeper way, he'll just, in a still small voice or with a, with a conviction, he'll say, don't do that anymore. Add this. Don't do that. Add that. But don't do that. And it's up to you whether you do and don't do what he tells you to do based on your obedience will be a level will be based on how deep a relationship you have with him or you'll grow stagnant and you'll go backwards because that's just the way it works if you know that you want to have a walk with the lord or you want to get your life right just say this simple prayer with me super easy the prayer is easy you know jesus is for free he offers himself for free, but it costs you everything because it costs you you. You now die to yourself and you say, Lord, whatever you want, I'm that vessel. So although it is a free gift, it costs you everything. It costs you you. You now die to yourself. So if you're willing to do that, say this simple prayer with me. And then from this moment on, from this moment on no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, from this moment on, you live for him. Say this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you right now. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. And from this moment on, I live for you. No going back. And I thank you for what you did on the cross. And in Jesus' mighty name, I am yours. Amen. If you said that prayer, Please, 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 please let us know. We definitely, listen, we pray and we stand with the people who have um, gotten saved. And we want to like help you out. Even if it's like you don't come to this church, which has been the case. People have gotten saved and they don't come to this church. Uh, we still pray for you. Get in, find a excellent church. If you don't know of a really good church, then reach out to us and we will try and help you find one if you live in the area though this is your place this is where you should come and we will help you every step of the way we have great discipleship classes as far as we have some great hub groups men women's uh, uh, um, co men and women uh, hubs and hubs are bible studies and they will help you become strong in the lord and grow in power and might and then you'll disciple all other believers, get them saved, win crowns in heaven, and sky's the limit for how far you'll go. That's it. I'm done. I will see you on Friday, and I cannot wait. It'll be me and Erin again. Heather, will you be here? Maybe. Heather says maybe. Maybe she'll be here. <laughs> it's a definite maybe. It's a definite maybe. <laughs> Heather, Heather does not ever promise unless she knows. Trust me on that. So we'll see you Friday. Can't wait. Another live. See you later. Bye.